Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. In this video, we are going to cover some JWT interview questions. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with others and subscribe. Your support is vital as it helps the YouTube algorithm to promote this video to broader audience just like you. So let's get started. Hey guys, uh, recently we have launched a course covering an end-to-end -end full stack application using Angular as front-end and microservices and Spring Boot as the back-end. Also, we have used Cloud to deploy this application and we have used CI CD that is Jenkins and Argo CD for continuous integration and continuous deployment. The technologies that we have used is REST RESTful Web Services, Spring Boot and Microservices for backend, Angular for frontend, GitHub we have used for version control system. Also to make the code unit testable, we have used JUnits. We have used Sonar for code quality checks. Also for containerization, we have used Docker and Kubernetes. And to deploy this whole application, we have used AWS and multiple services from AWS. Also, we have used SQL as well as NoSQL, that is MongoDB and SQL. On AWS, since for the SQL, we have RDS, we have used those services in Jenkins and Argo CD for CI CD pipeline. Also, this is an architecture of the application that we have created where the front end is Angular and the back end is microservices. We have used ALB load balancers, ingress for routing and load balancing. And we have used SQL and MongoDB for SQL and NoSQL DB management with Eureka server and all those microservices counterparts. Now, this is the CI CD pipeline. This is the CI CD flowchart for the application that we have created on local. So, this is something a flow when you create an application in local, push it to GitHub, create a Jenkins pipeline, and do the CI CD uh, using Jenkins and Argo CD. And at the end, deploy the whole code at AWS EKS. Complete description of this course is covered in a very separate video. The link for that video is also given in the description bar below. And also the link to purchase that course from Udemy is also in the description bar below. Now next is what is JWT tokens. Also, we have a complete separate video on JWT created for you. Just for the interview purpose, what is JWT? Uh, JWT stands for JSON Web Token. It is a compact, self-contained way to represent information between two parties, typically used for securely transmitting information between client and server. Suppose have, there is a front-end application, there is a back-end application. Now, front-end application is expecting you to create an order. But are you authorized to do that? Are you logged in? So, how will you define your authenticity and authorization for it? That is through the JWT tokens. So, JWT tokens are used for authentication and authorization scenarios. The JWT is basically a string consisting of three parts, the header, payload and signature. So, it's X, Y, Z. Here you can see, this is the JWT.io. Here this is X, this is Y and this is Z. So, that is header, then we have payload, then we have signature. So, that is how the JWT token is created. So, header consists of two things, the token type and the algorithm being used. So, here this is the algorithm used and the type is JWT. The payload consists of claims. So, here you can see there are three types of claims here. That is SUB, name and the time. Name is say John Doe. So, these are the claims. That is personal information of the user. So, second part contains the payload containing the claims. Claims are the statement about entities or typically the user and their data. The, the user ID, the user name, all those things becomes the part of claim. Now, there are three types of claim, registered, public and private claim. We have already covered all this in an explicit video. If you want me to cover it again, I'll give you the link in the description. The last part is the signature part, which is where you have the encoded header. Encoded payload. So, base64 encoding is basically used for encoding your headers, payloads. A secret and algorithm defined in header that signs that. So, here you have the HS256 encoding. So, with this encoding, your this whole signature is encoded. So, what it takes is it takes the header encoded. It takes the payload encoded. Then it gives you some secret. It adds all these three things and the total is actually encoded with what is given here HS256. So here HS256 is used for your encoding and this signature is used to give you the authenticity of your JWT token. 
So JWT is signed with a secret key or with a public private RSA algorithm. The signature ensures the integrity of your token and allows you to verify the token was not tempered at all. So JWTs are often used in the authentication flows. For example, when the user logs in, server gives you the JWT for user's identity and all the other relevant data in the terms of claims that I have shown you in the payload. The payload has all the claims about the user. So this JWT is then sent by the front end to the resource server or the Tomcat and then the server or our application, backend application ensures whether the JWT is properly signed or not. How does it verify the sign? Your Tomcat application will have this secret. It will encode the header, it will encode the payload, it will give the secret and will encrypt it and will see the sign matches. If the sign matches, then you are good. This token is not tempered. If it is not matching, then somebody has tempered with your JWT token. It will give you authentication authorization error. That's how authentication authorization is done for the JWT token. Now, why do we use JWT tokens? Because they are compact. They are easily transmitted in the HTTP headers, the parameters or within cookies. Usually, we send the HTTP uh, headers with the bearer tokens for these JWT tokens. Now, what kind of information you should put in JWT? Remember, since it is easily decodable, it is just the base64 encoding that you use. It can be easily decoded with the base64. So since it is easily decodable, you should avoid using sensitive information such as password, the personal ID numbers in JWT tokens because they are basically 64 encoded. Anyone can decode and read its content. So this is very important thing. Do not put anything in header and payload and claims, which is very sensitive. It will easily be decoded. Next, keep it compact means it should be lightweight and compact. It should only have the necessary information because there is a limit to the claims you can add. Else your token will be very heavy. Now some information which are redundant and can be found from the other sources like database, you can avoid them. Like for example, the user ID can be fetched from the table, then you, you just such, such that a username can be fetched from the table. You just pass the user ID, all the information can be taken from the database. So avoid redundancy, just pass whatever that is needed. Also include information which is relevant and not needed for a particular interaction. For, if for authentication, you just need the user ID and the roles. You might not need the user name. So here the John Doe that we keep here can be also asked as an attribute from the database. So again, remove the unnecessary things, keep it compact and keep only information that is needed for authentication and authorization. Do not keep anything just for sending it. Then we have custom claims. You can also add n number of custom claims, just not what, what is given by JWT standards. So you can also do that. Now a very important question, how does resource server validates the given JWT token is valid? Does it always have to go to what server? So suppose Okta is our authentication server, authentication authorization server. Does it always have to go and say, is this token valid? Is this token valid? Answer is no. You can also check it with the expiration time, the signature and additional checks from the claims. So there are three ways to check it. So you have a signature, right? Now as a backend application, I will have the secret with me. I will have the header and payload coming in the token. I can encode it in this way, add my secret, encode the whole thing with SHA 256 and validate the signature. If the signature is valid, then the token is not tampered at all. So that's what the backend application must do, first thing. Also, it should also check the validation of expiration check. So you have the expiration time coming in the claims, in the token payload. If the current time is later than the expiration time, then it is invalid and do not allow the person to use that token. It should give you an exception of the token has already expired. So you being the backend application, you have all these tasks to be done by yourself. Do not always go to Okta server and ask, is this token valid? Is this token valid? It will just add the extra networking overhead to your application. So first check the verification of signature on your own, check the expiration, also check the claims. Suppose in the claims you have the audience, that is AUD, that is a claim given by JWD to you. So it can perform, your application, backend application can perform the checks on the basis of audience claim to ensure token is intended for your application. Also check all the custom claims in the authorization 
for the authorization and access control part. So once you are done with this, now you can actually do it on your own. You don't have to depend upon Okta to tell you whether the token generated by Okta is right or not. But still there can be some cases where you might need to go to additionally check whether you are most you are having the most updated token or not. There will be there can be multiple cases. I'm not denying that. So once you do it on your own, that is stateless validation, where the resource server or your backend application independently checks the token signature, independently checks the expiration, independently checks the claim and say that this token is valid. You can go ahead with the resource and take the resource that you need. But in case there might be some occasion where you need to call the authorization server like Okta. In such cases, which is beyond the signature verification and token validation with expiration. In that cases, you can have the call to Okta, give the token and tell, am I having the right token? Should I give the resource to the front end? If yes, then that is stateful validation. So it depend, completely depends upon you. What I always prefer is stateless validation because it prevents the network overhead and potential performance reduce, reduction. So that was all about JWT interview questions. If you want more such videos where we have JWT integrated with Okta and interview questions related to those, just let us know in the comment section. We are going to create more such videos for you. Thank you.